Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm Margaret Martin, a physical therapist with over 40 years of clinical experience. For the past 15 years, I've specialized in helping women with osteoporosis and osteopenia, and men, I should say, rebuild their bone strength and confidence. So today I want to share some fascinating findings about a recent comprehensive research review published in May of 2025 that examined how combining exercise with hormone therapy affects bone health. Now this is more for women, so sorry guys. I will also discuss a little bit later what was shared at the April 2025 World Congress on osteoporosis regarding hormones. If you're concerned about osteoporosis or you've been wondering whether hormone therapy might be benefiting your bones, then this video is perfect for you. So let me start by explaining what happens to your bones during menopause. Most of you probably already know this. It's always good to review. So throughout your life, your bones are constantly remodeling. They're breaking down old bone tissue and then building new bone tissue. This process is carefully balanced with two types of cells, the osteoblasts that build the bone and the osteoclasts that break down the bone. And estrogen plays a really crucial role in this process. It enhances the activity of the bone building, the osteoblasts, while suppressing the bone breaking down cells, the osteoclasts. When estrogen levels decline during menopause, this delicate balance shifts dramatically. And the result is that more bone is being broken down than built up. So the imbalance happens, leading to a decrease in bone mineral density and an increase in fracture risk. The research shows that postmenopausal women can lose bone at a very alarming rate, with bone resorption significantly outpacing bone formation. And this is why osteoporosis affects one in three women over 50 worldwide. So now let's talk about menopause hormone therapy, or I'm going to just call it MHT. This treatment involves supplementing the hormones your body is no longer producing in adequate amounts. In the research paper, they identified two main types of MHT. Combined MHT, which includes both estrogen and progesterone, like progesterone, this is recommended for women who still have their uterus as the progesterone protects the lining of the uterus from the effects of the estrogen alone. And then there was estrogen only MHT, which was suitable for women who've had a hysterectomy since there's no uterus to protect. The research shows that MHT works by reducing excessive bone resorption, calms those osteoclasts, especially putting the brakes on the bone breaking osteoclasts so it calms them down that go into overdrive after menopause. Exercise is another powerful tool for bone health. So when you exercise, especially with weight bearing and resistance ex activities, you create mechanical stress on bones. This stress triggers your bone cells, especially the osteocytes, to respond by stimulating new bone formation and helping the osteoblasts. The research review analyzed multiple studies and found that specific types of exercise are the, that are most effective are the ones we just mentioned. Resistance training, but at a high enough level, 70 to 85% of your one rep max, perform two to three times a week. Impact activities like jumping, jogging, or hopping, done at least three times a week. And combined programs that included both resistance and impact exercises. So those types of exercises were really critical. That exercise alone can significantly improve bone mineral density in the lumbar spine, femoral neck, and total hip. But here's where it got really interesting is the research found something quite remarkable. When exercise and menopause hormone therapy are combined, they work better together than either intervention alone. Specifically, the studies showed that MHT plus exercise generated significantly greater effects on both femoral neck density and lumbar spine bone density compared to exercise only interventions. This suggests what researchers call a positive estrogenic 
response to mechanical loading during exercise. In simpler terms, estrogen appears to amplify your bones response to mechanical stress of exercise. Think of it as estrogen making your bones more receptive to the bone building signals that exercise provides. The research noted that mixed loading exercise program, those combining different activities were particularly sensitive to this MHT enhancement, specifically for spine bone density. I think it's so important to note that the current prescribing practices have evolved significantly. Many healthcare providers now prefer transdermal estrogen, which are patches, gels, sprays, which have been shown to have a lower risk of blood clots and stroke. Also, bioidentical progesterone rather than synthetic, synthetic progestions. The research emphasizes that most current guidelines recommend MHT primarily for women under 60 or within 10 years of starting menopause and only when other treatments aren't suitable. When the brakes were put on the use of hormone therapy for women in North America, following the Women's Health Initiative study in 2000, the same was not the case in Europe or South America. At the World Congress on Osteoporosis this past April in Rome, gynecologists from Brazil and Italy spoke of the youthfulness that went beyond bones in their 80 and 90 year old patients who had been using hormone replacement therapy for decades. Based on this research, here are my five evidence-based recommendations. Number one, prioritize exercise as your foundation. Regardless of whether you choose hormone therapy, exercise still should be central to your bone health strategy. The research consistently shows that structured exercise programs can significantly improve bone density. Two, consider the timing. If you're considering menopause hormone therapy for bone health, the research suggests strongly that it may be most effective during perimenopause and early postmenopause, ideally within the first 10 years after menopause. Three, focus on combined exercise programs. So aim for a program that includes resistance training for two to three times a week at a moderate to high intensity and impact activities at least three times a week. Duration of at least six months, meaning it's great to get go going over six months, but then keep it going with longer programs showing much better results. This is something you want to do for life. Four is discuss modern menopause hormone treatment options with your doctor. Because if you're considering hormone therapy, talk with your healthcare provider about it, about do they, or if they're familiar with transdermal estrogen delivery methods, are bioidentical hormones an option? Your, discuss your individual risk profiles. Is this something that you're able to take? The timing of the initiation around your menopause. Take a personalized approach. The research emphasizes that osteoporosis management requires a personalized, multifaceted approach. Your treatment plan should consider your individual risk factors, your medical history, and your preferences. So remember, while exercise is universally beneficial and recommended for bone health, menopause hormone therapy isn't appropriate for everyone, nor is it recognized. The research noted that many guidelines prioritize other medications like bisphosphonates as a first-line treatment for osteoporosis, while menopause hormone therapy considerations might not always be suitable. The key takeaway from this research is that if you're a candidate for both interventions, combining exercise with appropriate hormone therapy, it may be providing you with a synergistic benefit for your bone health that neither approach on its own could achieve. This research gives us valuable insight into how we can optimize bone health during and after menopause. The combination of exercise and hormone therapy shows promise but it's crucial to work with a knowledgeable healthcare provider who can help you weigh the benefits and risks based on your individual situation. Remember, building and maintaining bone health is a marathon, not a sprint.
consistency with exercise, whether combined with hormone therapy or not, remains your most powerful tool for strong bones and reduced fracture risk. If you want to find out more about my personal experience starting menopause, hormone therapy, I have a playlist for you right here. If you have not already, please subscribe for more evidence-based information about building stronger bones. Take care, stay active, and thanks for so much for joining me today.